Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. I want to show you two words that make all of the difference in the world. I guess we don't... Glenn Beck, no. Context matters. Context matters. Last night about 11 o'clock, I'm at home and I get, a, I get an email from one of my researchers. He says, Glenn, Andrew Breitbart just had a, a video. Just had a video. Now, Andrew apparently had this out yesterday afternoon. I hadn't seen the video, and I know uh, Sean and uh, uh, Bill played it last night. You may have seen this video. Watch it. I'm Okay, this looks really bad. Context matters. Is this woman a racist? Or was this a pivot point? Why is it important? Well, the White House, this story broke yesterday. I haven't even aired this video until today. This story broke yesterday, and the White House has forced this woman to resign. And here's how they told her to do it. She said this this morning on CNN. I had at least three calls telling me the White House wanted me to resign. So the pressure came from the White House. And, and the last one asked me to pull over to the side of the road and do it. She said, well, surely they want you to pull over to the side of the road and do it. Because you are going to be on Glenn Beck tonight. She wasn't on Glenn Beck because I didn't even know about this story yesterday. We were focused on assassinations. Is it possible this is a political assassination from the White House or from the NAACP? I don't know. See, we, context matters, but we don't have the full video. Andrew Breitbart is trying to get the full video. We know the White House is watching today. They say that they, they don't watch this program, but they do. As they said yesterday, you got to resign now because you're going to be on Glenn Beck. They watch, and I want them to continue to watch tonight. If you're a regular viewer of this program, you probably won't be surprised at what I have to say about this situation. But I believe the White House is going to be stunned. Maybe we can make some progress and educate them. Let's get started. the White House. You're the only people that have this phone number. If I get any of this wrong tonight, call me. Yep. Still works. Still works. We're going to focus on the media, by the way. Hello, America. Robert Gibbs. Tonight, we're going to focus on the media. But first, I want to delve into this story because I think the media, in the end, is involved. Let me show you again the comments from Shirley Sherrod. She is the USDA's Director of Rural Development in Georgia. Back in March, why is this coming out now? Back in March, she was addressing the NAACP. She said this about helping a white farmer. Okay, obviously racist comments to deserve to be condemned. Now, she's been forced to resign, and that's where the problem comes in. Because she says she hasn't even been allowed to tell her side of the story, which allegedly is that this event took place 24 years ago, and in fact, now she is friends with that farmer, and she was only telling that story 
to show that she learned her lesson, that it is not about race. She goes on to say it's not about black and white. It's about who has and who has not. Now, lending credibility to her side of the story, let me play her comments that we do have right after stating that she turned the white farmer over to one of his own kind. Here it is. That's when it was revealed to me that you are a survivor versus those who have. And not so much about white. It is about white and white, but it's not, you know, it opened my eyes because I took him to one of his own. Boy, I am. I'm puzzled by this. She seems like a nice lady. If it was indeed a, a speech to where, like this would be like taking a videotape of me at an AA meeting where I say, and you know what, I have to tell you something. I, I was drunk every day. I was completely out of control. I'd pass out, having blackouts, and stop the tape there before I said, until I found Jesus, until I found AA, until I realized there was another way. And then Fox firing me because they're rolling a tape of me saying that I was drunk and passed out. Hmm. Now, I believe that somebody is innocent until proven guilty. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't ever make a judgment call on anyone. There's enough there that makes you say, hmm but it's the only tape that I have seen on her. The only one. The NAACP was lightning fast to release a statement supporting her forced resignation. Lightning fast. But weren't they the ones that helped turn the tide with the DOJ from the Panthers? I mean, they haven't, they haven't even released the rest of the tape, so we can't corroborate her claim. They have the tape. They won't release it for some reason. Then this afternoon, after she was fired or resigned, the NAACP released this updated statement. Quote, the NAACP is conducting an investigation into the recent revelations about the situation with Miss Shirley Sherrod, attempting, including attempting to speak with Miss Sherrod and the farmer in question. And viewing the full video, following a full and comprehensive process, we will issue an updated statement. Hold on just a second. They didn't talk to her? The NAACP didn't, they didn't, they didn't get her side of, they didn't watch the whole video? When was the last time the NAACP didn't give someone the benefit of the doubt right away who was African American? Again, I point out the Black Panthers. Now, if she is just relating a story from 1986 to make a point about how her racial perceptions changed, this woman deserves her job back. Again, me at AA, something is definitely wrong here. Yes, the Obama administration does have a history of acting without all the facts. I think it's fair to say, number one, any of us would be pretty angry. Number two, that the Cambridge police uh, acted stupidly in arresting somebody when they, there was already proof that they were in their own home. I have not seen them act this way with a supporter or someone in their own administration. They're doing the same thing to Shirley Sherrod that they did to the police officer. How and why would you force someone's resignation if they were relating a story of a 24-year-old incident to make a point. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand that. How many times when a controversy comes up, have we heard that someone was misquoted, they misspoke, or they were told that the point that the, we were simply making was, and then some point that bears absolutely no resemblance to the one they were making, or they were taken out of context. Now, here is a possible actual example of that. Maybe not, but that's what she says. Someone taken completely out of context and they immediately, immediately get rid of her. 
All during the Jeremiah Wright fiasco with presidential candidate Barack Obama, still a member of his church, we continually heard, oh, you're smearing the poor man with sound bites. You're taking him out of context until finally we discovered that the only context for Reverend Wright was anti-American racism. But now, on the very day Breitbart releases this video and it becomes public, Sherrod is harassed into resigning before I even make it on the air last night and I didn't run the video. Here's her description of how it happened yesterday. Watch. Why?